Welcome to the 15th and the last lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In this lecture, we will learn about mean value theorem, which is another important theorem in both calculus and real analysis. So this will be our last lecture, and this will be our last topic in our discussion of differentiation. Now, the mean value theorem states that for a function f defined on a closed interval and is continuous function and differentiable at every point between a and b, the endpoints of the domain. So when f is a continuous function, when f is continuous at every point in its domain and is differentiable at uh, the open interval a to b, the all of the numbers between uh, the endpoints of the domain a and b, then there exists some c, which is an number between a and b, an element of the domain of the function f exists, which satisfies the equation f of b minus f of a equals f prime of c times b minus a. This means that geometrically, when there's a function f like this, Define between A and B when its it, function is continuous and differentiable at every point, there exists a certain point between A and B such that the slope at that point, the slope of the tangent line at that point, is equal to the secant line connecting point a comma f a and a b comma f b so in this case these two points could be our c where where the slope of the tangent lines are equal to the slope of the secant line connecting the two endpoints of the domain. So, the theorem states this. So, how do we prove this? We first split the case into two cases. Proof. The first case, when f of b equals f of a and the second case when it does not equal f of a the first case is a special case of the mean value theorem and is known as the Rolle's theorem after the name of the mathematician who proved this theorem in this special case so in this case geometrically this means that uh, whenever whenever there are two uh, two points with the same function value in a continuous and differential function there is a some there exists some point such that the slope of the tangent line at that point is equal to zero like this, this the picture is kind of slanted but I think you get the picture so we'll first prove the first case and uh, using the first case, we will prove the second case. So, in the first case, let us prove the Rolle's theorem. Now, since f is a continuous function, by our pre previous discussion, we know that f has a maximum value and a minimum value. So, there exists some c and d in the domain, uh, in the domain of f, such that for all x between 
the endpoints of the domain, the following relationship holds. F of C is less than or equal to F of X, and F of D is greater than or equal to any F of X. So F of D is the maximum value of function F in the domain uh, A to B, and F C would be the minimum. Now when F C equals F D, then F is a constant function. Therefore, the, the value we find could be just the arithmetic mean, the average of two endpoints. Then using this value, the uh, equation we wanted to hold will hold. So FB minus FA will be 0, which is equal to F prime of A plus B divided by 2 times B minus A which is 0 because this value will be 0 as f is a constant function. So uh, including this average, any value between uh, a and b will hold in this case because f is a constant function and its differentiated value will be 0 at any point in this domain. So in this case, the case is easy. In the other case, when the maximum is strictly greater than the minimum value, uh, we again split the case into two cases. When f a is greater than f c, or it is less than f d, well, the minimum or maximum could occur in the two endpoints, but uh, at least, uh, well, either of the cases, at least one of the cases should hold. So we Let's look at this case because the other case, it will be just symmetric. So in this case, we know that C is a value between A and B. Uh, because, C cannot, uh, because C cannot be uh, equal to A or equal to, uh, equal to B. Because in that case, uh, uh, this relationship would not hold. So C is a value between A and B. And therefore, for all values x between c and b, since fc is a minimum, the following relationship would hold, f of x will be greater than or equal to f of c, and therefore the quotient, the slope of the secant line between x and c, will be always greater than or equal to zero. And therefore, its limit at x goes to c when x is greater than c which is equal to f prime of c because f is a differential function between a and b will be greater than or equal to zero and now when uh, for for values between a and c for values y all y between a and c we know that f of c is good uh, less than or equal to f of y. So the quotient f of y minus f of c over x uh, y minus c will be less than or equal to zero because its denominator is negative and its uh, and its numerator is positive. And therefore, the limit of this quotient uh, when y approaches c in the left side of c which is also equal to f prime of c will be less than or equal to zero. So by these by these two cases we get f prime of c equal uh, f prime of c is less than uh, greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to zero, meaning that f prime of c is zero. So we have found the value c between a and b that satisfies the uh, satisfies the equation f prime of c equals zero, and therefore the equation f of b minus f of a, which is zero in this case, is equal to f prime of c times b minus a. And in the other case, when f of a is less than f of d, the uh, logic is exactly symmetric, and the uh, you could prove it in the same way. So we have proven that. 
uh, we have proven the mean value theorem for the first case uh, when f of b equals f of a, uh, the Rolle's theorem case. So now, let's proceed to the second case when f of b does not equal f of a. In this case, follows from the first follows from the result of the first case. So in this case, we think of a function g from the same domain with f defined like uh, the following g of x equals b minus a times f of x minus f of b minus f of a times x so since f is a continuous function and is differentiable between all values uh, uh, differ differentiable in, at all values between a and b, we could easily uh, check that g is also a continuous function in its domain and differentiable between a and b. And also, if we calculate g of a, which is equal to b minus a times f of a minus f of b minus f of a times a and calculate g of b which is equal to b minus a times f of b minus f of b minus f of a times b you could easily check that g of a equals g of b because uh, these values will disappear like this and if you compare the values left it will be b f of a minus a times f of b and that would be equal for uh, sorry that would be like that so that would be equal for both g of a and g of b so therefore g of a equals g of b and g is a continuous function which is differentiable between all values in, at its endpoints of its domain therefore g satisfy the uh, conditions for the first case the Rolle's theorem that means that there exists is c such that c which is between a and b such that g prime of c, the differentiated value of g at c, equals 0. Now, if we calculate the differentiation of g, if we differentiate both sides, we can see, easily see that g of x is equal, and g prime of x is equal to b minus a times f prime of x minus f of b minus f of a. Therefore, at c, we get b minus a times f prime of c minus f b minus f a equal zero because this is g prime of c and if we move this term into right side we exactly get the uh, desired equation therefore uh, using this g we have proven that there exists a c between a and b such that this equation holds for f. And therefore, we have proven the second case. And by the first case and the second case, we have proven the mean value theorem. So this is the end of this lecture and of the Open Knowledge Advanced Calculus course. So far in this course, we have covered subjects such as convergence, continuity and differentiation now although this course was first planned to continue until we cover an, an, uh, other important subjects such as integral calculus and so on we do not have enough time to prepare all 
all the lectures until we cover all those topics. However, if you want further instructions or have any questions, you could always contact Open Knowledge by our website or blog. And you could contact me through Open Knowledge as well. So feel free to do so. So this is the end of the advanced calculus course of Open Knowledge. The instructor was Jae Lee from Chungsham International Academy. Thank you very much.